We're going to be creating a JavaScript quiz game from scratch with the data coming from a local JSON file. So the JSON file is going to load all of the questions, have the correct answers as well as the options, and this will dynamically change. So if we add and update additional objects within the array, those are also going to be as questions within the application. We hit the start button. It asks us our first question with all of the options. The options are randomly presented in a random order, so it will always be a different order. So if you go in again, that order is gonna change. The correct answer is always gonna be the same, and that's driven from the JSON file. So when we make a selection, we can select it, and it's gonna show us the wrong ones and make the correct one green. The buttons get disabled. Our next option is to move to next. We get some feedback whether we got it incorrect or correct. Then moving on to next, so we get the next question within the JSON object. And also we get some feedback whether we got it right or wrong. Move on to the next. And once we've reached the last question, our button says end game. So we click the button, tells us game over, our score out of the total number of questions. So this is all dynamically driven, all being used with JavaScript. We're making a fetch request to get the JSON data and then creating the page elements in order to make the gameplay for the quiz. Set up our web project. We've got an index.html file where we've got a main container and this is where the content can go as well as a button to start the game process. And we're just gonna update the content here and it'll just say start. So we just have one start button showing up on the page and this is gonna start the entire game. We've got a quiz that we're gonna be building using the JSON file, accessing the contents of the JSON file, and that's all gonna be coming from the JavaScript. So let's go ahead and we're gonna select the JavaScript file from the HTML, and then connect to the page elements. The first page element that we're gonna be selecting is gonna be the button, and this is where the game content is gonna kick off. So let's create a variable, I'll call it BTN, and then using the document and query selector, let's select the element with an ID of BTN. And then we can make that element clickable by using the on click method, running some code when the button gets clicked. And we'll just type ready into the console. So we press start, see ready into the console. So now that we have that working, let's select the main container from the page and select it as a variable called main and then using the document and query selector, we're gonna select the element. And this is gonna be selecting the element that has a class of container into a variable called main, and that way we can update content. So we can take the text content of main, and then we can type clicked onto the page. So whenever the button gets clicked, we see the updated content that says clicked on the page. So we wanna provide some instructions whenever the game loads within the main area. And this is gonna be where we can have some messaging. Uh, so we wanna create some elements for the page. I'm gonna create a function that can create some page elements. And it's gonna require a parameter of the parent that we're attaching it to, the element type. So that's gonna be a string value of the type. And then if we've got some inner content for it, we're just gonna attach the inner HTML content for it. In addition, we'll also pass in ability to add a class to the element. So just pass it in as a parameter with the argument variable of C. So now that we are ready to create the elements, we can create the element using the document and create element. And this will allow us to create elements as we're gonna be creating multiple elements on the page and then making them interactive. So the element type is gonna be contained within the variable of T. And then within the element, let's update the inner HTML of the element that we just created. Set a value of HTML uh, using the class list. And we're gonna add whatever the class value is to the element. And then return the element, selecting the parent object and using the append child method and this is where we can add the element into the page. So let's create some elements on the page. 
uh, for the game, we're going to need a message area. And this is where we can have some messages or instructions for the user on what is expected next. So within the page elements, the main object, the element type, we can create this as a div, the inner content of it. Uh, so this will just pre say, press start button. So this is the instructions for the user. And then for a class, this can also be a string value. And then if we want to apply some styling, we can add those classes to it afterwards. So let's see what happens within the HTML when we create the button and we're creating the elements on the page. And this element will say to, so there's the div that we created with the press start button. When the button is pressed, we want to load the data. So let's create a function and this will uh, make our Ajax request to the quiz JSON file and return back the data. And then that way we can start the game process once the data has loaded. So when we press the start button, that is actually gonna load the data and we can just apply and assign this function in order to, to handle whenever the data is loaded. So let's uh, set up some more variables. And this variable is going to be where our quiz JSON file is going to sit. So let's uh, add that in as a URL. We'll make the fetch request to the URL. And this is just going to be using a regular get request. Once we get the response object, and we can return this response object back as JSON. And then the last part of the promise, uh, this is where we have it as data. And then we can use this data and output it into the console. And first we'll try it and just make sure that everything is working. When we click the button, we see that there's throwing an error there because we don't have any JSON data. Uh, so let's add in some JSON data. So just create an array and press start. So there's our array that we're loading. So let's uh, construct the JSON data and we want to have a bunch of questions that we want to load and these questions are going to be structured as an object and then we can duplicate so first off let's set up our structure and we need a question and the question that we're going to be asking is and we'll say what color is the grass and we don't need the question mark as we're going to be adding that in afterwards uh, so the answer that we're expecting is going to be green and then we want to also create some options that can be looped through so this can be an array and these will be possible answers that we might want to use uh, so let's uh, set up red and yellow and we're going to repeat this same structure in order to create the other questions and just comma separate out because this is going to be contained within an array so now when we press the start button, there's our question, our options, and our answer. So we're ready to start loading that onto the page. So going back in where we've got the load data. So this is where we can actually start the game. Let's hide the main button. So take the button and we'll take the button and set the display properties of the button. And this is going to be within the style properties. So display is within the style object and set that to be none. So that will hide the button. And let's create a container where we're gonna have the output. So just as we created the message, add in another area, and this is where we're gonna output the content into. So create a variable, we'll call it output. This is going into main, it's a div. There's no content in it. And this is where the main game object is going to sit. So we'll give it a class of main. So that creates the elements. And within the output area, this is where we can start adding the questions. So now that we've got the game started, we've loaded the data. The next step is going to be to create the question. And then once we create the questions, this is going to be how we can how the user progresses within the game. So create question function. And because we've got a, a data object, 
we can also store this data object globally or we can pass it into the create question and then move through the different questions that are contained within the array. So for now, what we'll do is we'll take the create question so that way we don't need to have a global object that has the data and then we'll move through the questions. And within the create question, we're gonna check to see, first of all, how big the data is. So if data length is zero, then that means that game is over. And uh, we can output into the message area, game over. So we don't have any more game, the game is actually gonna be over. So within the message and set the text content to game over. And if it's not over, then what we want to do is we want to remove the first item from the array. And this is going to be the data array. So we've got a number of items as objects within the array. And we want to remove the first item out of the array. And this is where we can use shift. So creating a variable, call it question. And then from the data array, we want to shift the question content out of it. And then within the console, we'll list out question. So press start, and there's our question. So when we do the shift method within the array, that's just gonna retrieve out that item. So now within data, we're not gonna have any additional content contained within data. And we wanna have the navigation to the next where we've got the create question of data. So the data object has to be passed back into the create question and we'll send it back in as we move through the questions of the quiz. So now that we've got a question loaded, let's create a function and this will be to output the content of the question. So we can call it output question and it's gonna be expecting the question data to be sent into it. So updating that and sending over the question into the create question function. And then from here, we can create questions. And we're gonna be using the page element function. Where we're gonna be creating those page elements. So within the output area, we wanna create an element. So let's create that, and this is gonna be our main element. And using the element pages method, let's create that. And the parent is gonna be, for this element, it's gonna be the output area. And then this is also the one that we're gonna be removing when we move on to the next question. So page elements output, the type of element is gonna be a div. There's no HTML that's gonna be contained within there. So that will just be blank. And the class that we're using will just be the question class. So attach that to the element. And then as we output the question and we create the question, we wanna add it into the parent. The parent object is gonna be the element that we just created. So we'll get the parent here. So this is the parent object where we're adding and we're creating the other elements into. So for this question, we've got a question object and we'll log out the question object into the console so that we can see the contents of it. So now let's create the question where we've got the question value there within the question object and we want to add that into the page. So adding it into the parent. So that's going to be the main question. So we'll just call it QUE and then using the function where we're creating the page elements. So page elements and the parent of the parent is gonna be that main parent that we created within the create question function. The type of element, it's gonna be a div. And the inner HTML of this is gonna be the result of question. And it's actually gonna be question, question is gonna be the object. And then we can also set a class to it and we'll give it a class of question. So that outputs what color is the grass. We also have to update that main message area. So within the message text, we'll output a value for question. And this will be question, whatever we've got for the question number. And before we shift the content out of data, let's add to the data object. And this is gonna be the number of total questions. So actually call it, give it a value of total and we'll get the current, whatever the, the data length is gonna be 
for it. And we need to actually add that into the data object and console log out data just to make sure that we do have a length for it. So this is gonna give us the total number of questions and double check. So we see that we did get the total within the console being output of a value of one within the data. So we've got the array that we're looping through and then we've got an object value of total that we can also take a look at. So within the data, we should create a new object that's gonna hold the values for the number of questions. And this is where we can hold the data object. So let's create a temporary object. And then within here, so this way it's gonna be a lot cleaner, the output, and we can have a value for total. And this will be the length of the data. So this will create a total value that we can use. And then uh, here we can have call it Q, and this is gonna be what we have for data. And then this can track the score. So we'll set the score at zero. So all of this information we're gonna pass into temp. And then once we retrieve back data, which is now gonna have a total value, so we don't have to set that over here, and we're gonna just have a total value that's passed into temp. And the data length is now gonna be within Q, and the data shift is gonna shift from the Q, which is gonna hold the array. And the question is going to be, uh, let's just add in a counter. And the counter will also be zero. So the counter will increment by one. So that's within the data counter. Increment that by one. So this will indicate which question we're currently on. And that's uh, data counter. So we press start, question one of, and then this is going to be where we can list out the total of questions. And that's contained within the data object that we just created. So that will have a total. So the data total. So this is more information for the player. So we've got one of one. Uh, let's uh, duplicate this. So we've got several questions here. And we can just copy the question itself. And then we'll make an update to it after. So when we start, now we've got two questions. So we're at one of two for the questions in the output. So what color is the grass? And we want to be able to present the user with some options. So we're gonna create the options uh, array. I'll just call it ARR. And this array is gonna be coming from the question object where we've got the options. So question and the options. So that's gonna be within the question array. And then within that, we want to push in from the question whatever the answer is. So the result within the console of this temporary array is gonna be all of the output that we wanna to put to the user. So we've got red, yellow, pink, and green. So this also includes the answer. And the reason we wanna include the answer is that we wanna present them as randomized options that the player can click in order to see if it's the right answer. And if it is the right answer, we have the question answer contained within the question object. Let's randomize the order of the arrays. So you can randomize an array, and this is gonna be done in place. So just as if we do an array sort, we can also randomize the order of the items of the array. So using a return within the sort argument, and this is a callback of using math random and randomizing the sort order. So it's gonna be either positive or negative when we use a math random minus 0 0.5, and this is gonna affect whatever the sort order is. So now we see that we've got a different sort order starting with red and red, yellow, pink, green. Now let's see what we get for the new sort order. So green, yellow, red, pink. So this will randomize the items in the array. And this is exactly what we wanna do where we wanna output that content on the page and we're gonna output them as buttons. So let's create a container. So this is gonna be where the buttons are gonna go for the options and create another page element. And the parent of this element is gonna be this question object. Actually, no, we can stick it within the parent and this can be a div. And there's gonna be no content within this item. And this is just gonna be whatever we want for options. So let's uh, loop through the number of items in the array. So using for each, we'll select each item in the array. And then we want to select them each as an option. So we're gonna create some items within the options parent for this one is going to be the BTNS. Uh, these can be buttons. 
text content for these is going to be whatever we've got for the element and that's just going to return back this value and we can give it a class of buttons we don't always have to give them classes it depends if i want to add in the styling for those it looks like we threw an error there and this one should be the option and i'll just i'll just call it temp op temp so that gives us all of the options there and we want to be able to click these and check if they are correct or incorrect. So let's add an event listener onto the element. And we'll add an event listener. And the event that we're adding to it is going to be a click. And then within the event object, we're going to check to see if it's correct or incorrect. And then we're going to update the BTNS with whatever the correct answer or the correct response is going to be. And then we want to also disable all of the buttons on the page. So once we make a select, and we'll actually use the on click method, as we don't need to attach multiple events on this. So just do a simple on click method for the element itself. And we want to check to see if the element is going to equal the question, the correct answer for the question. So if the correct answer is equal to whatever we've got for the element value then we're going to output that this question is correct in the message area so text content correct and then we'll disable all of the buttons afterwards so once we've got this part where we're checking to see if it's correct or incorrect and providing the feedback back to the user so press the start button what color is the grass we say green correct yellow is incorrect, pink, green. So right now we can click the buttons and there's no limit to how many times we can click them. So what we want to do is we want to disable the buttons. So this is these all have the class of BTNS. So let's make a selection of all of the elements that have a class of BTNS. So within the parent, using the query selector, all, we're going to select all of the elements that have a class of BTNS and create an object for that. So I'll just call it temps for a temporary object. And then we'll loop through each one of these elements. And then as we loop through, we'll set disabled to true. So start green, and then that will disable the buttons from being clicked. So we can also, uh, as we loop through them, we can update the colors of them. So selecting the element, style and what we'll do is we'll check to see if this is true as we loop through them so instead of checking on the element we can just check on l and if this is true we can set a different background color so let's set a bg c and on a ternary operator we're going to set to red or set it to green if it's correct. Otherwise, we'll set it to red and then we'll apply this to the element style and the background color and setting it to what we have for B. So we need to actually get the text content from the element. So element and then just get the text content from the element and try it again. And this time it should work. So correct, correct and this one's incorrect. So it gives us some information there uh, when we're outputting the content. Also, let's update the question. And I'm gonna update this so that we can add in the question mark at the end. So that gives us the question and then incorrect. And now we should be able to move on to the next part where we've got the output question and we need to have a button in order to move to the next question. And we only wanna show that button when we're ready. So let's create the button and then we'll pass that in to the output question. So this is gonna be the button and right now we'll set the button. So this is gonna be T button. So whatever the parent button is. Using the page element function to create the page element, we'll create it as a button. And this is gonna be attached into the element object. So that's the page elements that we created for the main question. And we'll, for now, we're going to write next, and I'll give it a class of next as well. And then for T button, we'll update the style so it's not going to show the button on the page. So right now it'll be display none. Pass in the T button object. And then once the selection has been made as we loop through, 
and we get the correct answer. So for T button, take the spot style and display, and then we'll set the display to block. So that will show that T button button. And we just need to pass it into the output question function. So save that and try it. So that gives us the next option there. So incorrect, uh, we can move to the next question. So now when we press this button, the T button button, then we want the ability to move to the next option. And we can also create this on the main page as well. So we've got the next option. And so when we move next, then we just wanna to move to the next question on this. So BTN on click is gonna create the next question and send the data back into there. And this is on a function. And so we also want to remove out that current element. So when the button gets clicked, we're taking the element and we're gonna remove it. So next, and now we've got game over. And we can apply some styling. Uh, so this actually shouldn't say next if we don't have any values into it. So this is gonna be um, saying if the length, so depending on what the length is, well, we'll have a condition that will check to see the length. And if the length of the data question length after we've removed out an item is equal to zero, then the button text content will say end game. So let's try it. Next, yellow, and now we've got end game, game over. And we don't need to show the next button. So we really need to add it into the page if there is an option for next. So just move that into the condition and then play through it again. And that should give us the game over option. So now we can track the scoring into the game object where we've got within the data score. So if it's correct, we're gonna update the data score value. And that's still coming from the main data object. And the score and these values are probably better tracked with a global object. So we can track the score value within here. And this will also make it a lot easier to reset. So taking the game score, if it's correct, and we increment it by one. And then once we end the game, we'll provide some output to the user. And this can be in our HTML. So set it up as HTML. So h1 game over, and then have the h1 as well. And then for the next line, let's add in a div. Within the div, we've got the game score, correct out of, and then this is where we can use the total for within the data object. So you scored out of the total questions. So first we get what color is grass, incorrect what color is grass, and now we've got end game correct, and then game over. So we've got the scoring for the game. We can apply some styling to make it look a little bit better as we do have some classes. And this is all optional as now we've got all of the functionality. Uh, so let's apply some styling in order to wrap up the project. So within the style, we've got the main message area. So that's a class that we're setting. And also within the main container, set it to a width of 90 vertical width, uh, set the margin to be auto, so it centers, set a border around it, then just do a really light border around it. So press start. I'm gonna add some styling to the main button. So it's gonna be the element with a ID of button. So display it as a block, add some padding around it, so 10 picks, set the font size, so make it really big, the start button. And then margin, so auto, since it's block. So within the message area, do a text align. So center align the text. So there's our question, our options. Uh, let's see some other styling that we can update. So within the main game, we've got an element with a class of question. So we can apply a little bit of styling to the game element as well. And uh, let's do a margin. And I'll do a background color for this element. So that gives it a little bit of color for the background. Going back in to where we've got the game. So the question, I wanna make the element with the class of question. So let's make that large. 
So set a different font size for it. Add some padding around that. And also I'm gonna do a little bit of margin around it. For the buttons, so we've got all of the option buttons, so opt buttons. So let's apply some styling for those as well, where we can add some margin around them. I'll also change the so text transform, so I can capitalize them, do a little bit of padding, and I'll set a color for white, and we'll set the default background color of them to be dark, so set them to be black. So this shows up a little bit better as we're setting them. Also set a minimum width of 50 picks for them. Maybe make that slightly bigger, so 90 picks. So that out, lays them out a little bit nicer. So what color is the grass? Uh, let's also update this question. So we've got the message. So let's uh, set a font family for those. And I'll also set a font family for the question as well. And then for the options, for the button options, let's set a font family for this one as well. For all of the elements, set the box sizing to border box. So that just styles it a little bit better. Uh, for the next button, so it's within the game, within the question, we've got an element that has a class of next. So that's the next button. So set that to display block. And then uh, set the margin to be auto. And I'll set a width of it for 100 picks. So there's our next button. And we can actually move it down. So instead of having it showing above the questions, uh, let's have it show below the questions. So where we re-display it, we'll also take the T, B, T, N, and append that element. So we're appending the element to that main question block that we just created. So appending it to whatever we have for the parent of the options. So that should put the next button just below there. Uh, let's uh, add a little bit of spacing for there and uh, set a margin for the top. So 30 picks for top and bottom, and then for left and right should be center. And we'll just set it as margin top. So that adds the button down there. And then now these ones are not clickable anymore. So the only option is to move to next, end game, and then there's our score for the game. So that's how you can make a quiz game. And now if you want, you can update the questions so and customize them as needed. And there, all of this should work so as we update the questions, we should still be able to add additional questions as needed. And let's uh, try adding in one more option. And this can actually even be like a true or false, or yes or no. And then the options are also optional, so it should change uh, depending on how many options we've got there. So do you like this course, yes or no? And then end game. So it still gives us the score. So you can customize the JSON file as needed in order to build the quiz content.